Hello, uh, this is James Fargan, and I want to make a record of my story. <clears throat> um, to make a long story short, first, uh, I want to insert my friends here. Say hello to Odungi Ono. Odungi and Kamdungi. Ducklings are great friends. They're just wonderful. Mm. Love them. Okay, uh, my story. Um, I'll start by saying that I was in New York on 911. I was living there and working there at the time, um, and it was a crazy mind fuck. Let me tell you. I lived on the north shore of Staten Island. I used to take the ferry past the Statue of Liberty to downtown Manhattan, and I remember in the months leading up to that event, I used to sit on the front of the ferry with my bagel and my coffee and look at those towers and for some reason the, the thought of planes flying into them kept recurring to me. And then it fucking happened. And I was distraught. And I watched the landscape change. I saw the fucking president on television drawing lines that ought not to be drawn and invoking God in a way that he ought not ever to be invoked. And I saw soldiers with M16s crop up outside of subway stations and I'd already lived in Korea. And by 2003 I'd had enough. I'd fucking had enough. And I decided it would be a great time to get out of Dodge. So, I accepted every fucking credit card offer that came into my mailbox. And I bought a great, wonderful menagerie of musical instruments, some of them exotic. And I had about a three-month party. And then I said, fuck it. I took my last toke. My best friend drove me to the airport. I got on the plane. I came back here. I ain't looking back. I'm going to become a Korean citizen. Anyway, uh, fast forward. Um, I've always been a fairly bipolar type person. Periods of extreme depression and extreme mania, and I think I'm past it now, but I did antidepressants, and let me tell you, if you're on antidepressants, get off of them. The withdrawal symptoms are absolute fucking chaos on wheels. But you need to get off of them if you've been on them. Um, uh, how do I... Okay. Uh, I went through a lot of shit, and uh, I was really severely depressed. Now I'm going up to about um, May of last year, 2011. And, you know, like 9-11 got me on this truth trajectory. Got me studying the world. And I, I ran, and I've got a pretty good bullshit detector. Right? So, um, I'm looking at the truth community and the alternative media 
You know, it's like alternative rock. It becomes an option on the pop-down menu. Alternative fucking media. Right? Yeah. So I'm looking at all this mixed bag bullshit on the internet. You know, like real hardcore truth mixed with absolute asinine bullshit. And I stumbled upon a nugget, a diamond of pure, unassailable, absolute truth. And I went, <gasps> really? Really? And I studied it. I studied it for days and then I put it away. And I came back to it and I studied it again. And I said, really? Can it be? And so I put it away again. And I came back to it again. And I studied it again. And this time there was no doubt. Now, what was that nugget? What was that diamond of pristine, unsullied, uncompromised truth? It was Jim Stone's Fukushima report. Not gemstone, as in G-E-M, but Jim Stone, as in J-I-M-S-T-O-N-E. And I said, fuck! Wow! Finally! Okay. What are, what, what are other people saying about this? And I looked at rents.com. Boo. Nothing. Nada. Zero zilch. Not a fucking word. And I looked at David Icke. I like Icke. I do. He's likable. And I want him to be true. Reptilians and all. But what did I do? Well, in his late June Sunday newsletter, he basically went on for the first seven pages presenting Jim Stone's information as if it was his own research. And then kind of like, boop, plopped Jim Stone's name in passing like, Oh, well, this, this chap has also done some fine work on the subject as well. I don't want to say fuck you, David Icke. I don't want to say that. But... And the, 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 the burning question was, why doesn't David Icke just link to the motherfucker? I mean, it's, a, it's an unadulterated nugget of truth. Why not just link to it incessantly? Why not make it the top of your news feed every single night? Why not? But he didn't. Instead, he kind of appropriated that information and made it look to his loyal followers like he had been the genius to dig it up. Well, no. It was Jim Stone. And so that set a burning question in my heart. A burning question. And Jim Stone promised on his website, I answer all emails that I receive that are not absolutely nuts. And so if you do not receive an answer, it means I did not get your email. And I emailed him and emailed him. I tried so many different things. I, uh, I created, I went to, you know, like, they have these places called PC rooms here where kids go to play games and smoke cigarettes. So I went to, like, unfamiliar places of the city where they, the IP address would just be random. And I tried setting up fake email accounts. And I got nothing back. 
and it, it, it just, it almost just killed my heart. I mean, here was this man that, oh, God, ah. Uh, I can't tell you how it hurt me. So fast forward again a few months to, uh, I believe it was December or January of this year. December of last year, or January of this year. I think it was January. I broke through. I said, well, try it again. And I broke through and I got a response. And Jim is like, hey, who are you? You're not Korean. I can tell that from your syntax. Wow, I got through. And so I came out of my stupor. I came out of my depression. Um, and I started trolling around for a website that would allow me to write uh, an article about Jim Stone's Fukushima report. And after a lot of non-response and rejection, Henry Macau agreed to give me a thousand words. And I about tore all of my hair out doing it. But I did it. And Jeff Rents said to Henry Macau, not only am I not going to link to that, you are not going to publish that on your own website. And Henry Macau, to his eternal credit, said, and he proceeded to uh, expose Rents for being a psychopathic serial wife abuser and then after that uh, Ike banished Macau and just today uh, Ike came out at Macau again so basically I don't want to toot my own horn but um, my primary objective in publishing those articles at Macau, I publish a total of five, three on stone. My primary objective was to help Jim Stone. My secondary objective was to out the traitors in the truth community. Truth community. And to get people questioning who is reporting what, and what are their motivations. And uh, then I saw uh, pornographic music videos being purveyed to South Korean youth, and I took a prominent example and dissected it, and produced a PowerPoint presentation which proved how they were using subliminal methods to fuck with children's minds and I uh, printed that thing out and took it to the vice president's office of the entertainment company in charge of that act here and I laid it on his desk and I said you have an enemy and then uh, I proceeded to uh, send some very nasty emails to some very nasty people and I wound up in jail and I will say this I'm coming up on my time limit the Korean police are very very good Korean police are wonderful they treated me very well they listened to everything I had to say and they're patriots not like those goons back in the states the police here are really really good so now with that said i'm going to close thank you for listening to my story i hope that if you like my story you will link it and spread it and help me to grow this video blog into something that it deserves to be thank you over and out